Last time on Tales of Zestiria. It's a fat cat? <gasps> my, my, that's pretty rude of you. Ah! <laughs> I prefer the term pleasantly plump. Hey guys, Raiden here, and welcome back to Tales of Zisteria. So, this is very nerve-wracking recording right now, because it's the first time I've recorded anything on a singular monitor in, like, a year. And I know it sounds like the most baby complaining thing in the world, be like, Oh, I don't have two monitors! Because I had to send the other one in for repair, because it's not working with my new speaker setup, because it's broken. But, um... It's really daunting, just because I can only see the screen and I can't see my computer, so... My computer could crash in the background for all I know, and it's really scary. It's really, really scary. <laughs> so, uh... We do have some things to do this episode. So you guys were saying that the, uh, Storyteller of Time stuff, by the way... Mogalu actually mentioned it back in Versaria, which is something that it, I had completely forgot. And it's very easy to forget, and I'm glad you guys remember all of these things, because Berseria had so many lines of dialogue, like, I cannot be expected to remember every single thing, but I'm glad you guys are far more attentive than I am, and probably remember a lot better than I do. But anyways, the first thing we're gonna have to do is finish up our side quest, which luckily we don't have a whole lot left, and we get to have a pretty relaxing episode, aside from whatever is going to happen in the main plot, because we have a lot of skits to go through, apparently. So... Yeah, these are all I have left to do right now. <laughs> I think we've found most of the Earth in Historia. And the pieces of this puzzle are really starting to come together. I think it's time to give Maven a visit. So, we got pretty much all of that. But we do need to visit this saint that's in Plitzerback Wetland. And uh, we also need to complete a dungeon that one of you guys told me has something in it I might be interested in. Even though it's just a side dungeon, so... We're gonna do that, but first, let's rest a lot. <laughs> Lila, sit here for a second. What is it? Just take a seat. So, you have a lot of Norman acquaintances, but don't seem terribly interested in Norman. Well, I mean, we're just friends, is all. What the? Just sit down already. Lila, you're underestimating them. Remember, we need to catch 50 of them or else. You really like the Norman, don't you, Edna? You even got one on your umbrella. You kidding me? I totally don't like them. Now, why won't you sit down? The last time I sat down, it was to pull an all-nighter. That's bad for fair skin like mine, so... Good night! Hey, sit down. <laughs> Edna's Norman therapy strikes again. I find it funny how she rarely expresses feelings for things she likes, but Norman's one of those things. Oh, she learned Norman for the win! So now Edna's not the only one who knows that. Not that I really need anyone else to know that. Why did she... Rose... Is the injury you got from him starting to hurt? Oh, no, I'm totally fine. It's just really embarrassing for me to get hurt like that when being kept ransom. No. What's really scary is that he would do such a thing without hesitation. And plus... Simone's reaction. Yes. Her illusions are really something. Her skills are quite unusual. But there's something even stranger about her. You mean how she isn't affected by malevolence? Yes. Or rather, how deeply she believes in him from the bottom of her heart. But how could she? When she was shot, she was smiling. How could she trust him so? Only she knows the answer. But Simone has remained a seraph while following the will of Heldolf. That much is true. So then what's really dangerous is how pure she actually is. Pretty ironic. Yeah. I actually think malevolence is a very interesting thing for storytelling because it's not just like, we have the evil juice inside of you now. <laughs> it's more like, oh, you are either in so much dismay that you become this horrific demon, or you are so pure in thought and you believe in what you're doing so much that even if it's the worst thing in the world, it's like, nope, I'm fine. No demon for me. Hey, Mr. Shepard, where's Lila and the others? They went to the sauna to relax. Oh, snap! Saray, let's set up the sauna! Eh, maybe later. Come on, don't be such a buzzkill! We men need to be open and comfortable about things like this. You know, a naked relationship. 
Well, you are always half naked, Zavid. <laughs> I may look like an exhibitionist when it comes to my body, but the door to my heart is always closed. That's why I wanted to take this time to bond with you. You know, like, as an accomplice. Don't tell me you're going to read the wind to snoop around the girl's sauna. Oh-ho! You're pretty sharp after all, you no-good shepherd, you. I don't think this is a good idea. Someone's definitely going to notice. I don't want to grow up to be the kind of guy who views everything as a win-or-lose situation. The trickling sweat, the flushed red cheeks. There is a healthy, sublime beauty in this closed space we call a sauna. Saray, let's go hunting for babes. Ah, <sighs> that sure was therapeutic. Why don't you guys step in as well? <laughs> you mean like this? That's not the... So this is something I could actually notice when I was looking through Miklio's art, but he actually has a little, uh, band on his forehead that you can't see because of his hair. What kind of babe hunting I'm talking about? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I just want V to have gone into the bath and he just closes his eyes and he's like, Oh yes, that's the kind of body. And Miklio just stands up and he's like, what? And he's like, oh! <laughs> they love me, they love me not. They love me. They love me not. They love me. What is it you're trying to find out? You know how I joined halfway? And like, after I did a bunch of not-so-nice stuff to you guys? I kind of wonder if everyone hates me. Well, what did you find out? Well, it looks like... Yeah, everyone pretty much hates me. <laughs> oh, come now. Saray and the others aren't like that. Yeah, he is the shepherd and all. Not to mention kind of a goody two-shoes. So, maybe it's kind of meaningful that a guy like me tags along, even if I'm not exactly welcomed. Then I'll do a little reading myself to see if you're truly welcome among us. A paper flower? That means there's only one- <laughs> Hold on, hold on, I have to see this before it disappears. She made a little paper flower and a little phoenix doll. At least I'm assuming that's phoenix. Damn, she is excellent in origami. I mean, it has to do with her fighting style and all that, but there's a dragon. Um, what I assume is a shepherd, and a ton of flowers. One petal. Zavid is our friend, it says. Uh, <laughs> it's just some dumb fortune. Maybe, but my fortunes are never wrong. <laughs> oh, Lila's always so sweet. So I guess our next step is to head over to Logren. Oh, look, Morgrim's the... <laughs> awesome. The lord of the land is a cat. I guess there's a dog in the other one, too, but still. Is this the village of the saint? No one's here. Not so sure about that. No one's here. Oh, wait a second. Hold on. Oh my god, it's another snake lady. Wait, hold on. I'm gonna take a guess here. If the other snake lady was Steno in that village, I bet this one's Uriel. It has to be. Let's see. Yep, I was right. <laughs> Very weak to physical. The skill that will protect against petrify is Aegis, a bonus skill that can activate through stacking six of the same basic skill. Put another way, if you haven't even accumulated six by now, it's probably best to turn back. Wait, I wonder, do I still get the immunity to petrification when I'm in wind form since Savid still has, like, his vision? This is Uriah Wait, this isn't Steno? Let's pick it up! A storm Aqua Blade! Don't get close! Cyclone! Bridge and Moon! Aqua Blade! Oh my god, she must be blocking for like 20 seconds straight. <laughs> I think that beats anything in Berseria. Oh my goodness, she has a move that just instant stuns you. 
I think I've been stunned more in this singular fight than I have in the entire game. Cool, level ups for everyone. Sweets are so good, especially after a battle. So, uh, the thing with those fights that I think makes it okay <laughs> is that they're referencing Uriel and Seno. <laughs> That's enough. So the saint just turned into a hellion. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling there's a lot more to this than we know. I bet if we paid visit to the church in Pendrago, we might learn a thing or two about this saint. Which we will do! But first, I have been told to go into these ruins that are straight ahead of us, so we'll do it while we're here. And how do I continue? The only ways forward I see are... these two gates... that are locked. Oh. Wait, you mean in all those other dungeons, I could have just wind-stepped through these gates? Oh. That makes a lot more sense now. <laughs> oh, and some of you guys are probably wondering, Hey, Zeno, I noticed with a lot of these side dungeons, all you do is you show yourself entering the dungeon, maybe doing one or two things in between, and then just cutting straight to the end. Why do you do that? The answer to your question is nothing happens in these myself, dungeons ever. I'm sure it's tasty. Like, the mechanics are never worth noting, and the monsters in here are reskins of other monsters, which I've kind of come to expect with Tales games, since it's just a... it's a thing and a limitation they have, because Tales games don't have the highest budget in the world. Especially this one. I feel like this game got a substantially smaller budget than uh, Berseria did. And that sounds weird, seeing as how this game... I, I, I'm i pretty sure this game actually still sold pretty well. I don't actually know. So I know a lot of people were hyped because it was going to be the first uh, console game to come out on the... Did this... No, this game came out on the PS3 and then I think later moved to the PS4? Or it came out on both at the same time? But either way, it was the first PS4 Tales game to exist, so... People are pretty happy with some of the... Technical limitations... That were removed. Oh, hey, Norman! His name is Void. Got any equipment with open skills so I can make it nice and pretty? <laughs> oh god, I don't want to fall off from up here. It's too high. And behind this door... ...is a dark, demonic, evil, old guy, zombie thing. Not... Undead level 72, well shit. This one looks like trouble. What's it called? Not. Huh? It's not. It's not Rose what? Flare vortex. Um, did Rose just? Lord of Fire. Yeah, Rose died. Field me. Let's get some speed up in here. Pierce and explode. You act on instinct way too much. Oh. Well, that did was. Did your instincts tell you that? Surprisingly easy. Let's And we got another our anomalous health. orb. Well then, cool. Oh yeah, you guys did also tell me that, um, I misread the Norman thing. I was reading up there where it says all 1 out of 109. And that makes me kind of wonder, how were there only 30-something Norman then? Oh, I kind of see this better now, so... I still don't understand how there's only 30 Norman or so, seeing as how there's 109 slots here, but... Uh, apparently there's only 50 or so, is what you guys said, so... I'm kind of confused about that, because the game here says there's 109 total right up there next to all. And that's kind of confusing. But anyways, we don't have that many. It's weird, because it's showing me E-Union, G-Union, Incantation. I'm a little confused by this, because a lot of these are all showing attack for the icon. But anyways, yeah, we don't have that many so far. I'm probably just gonna use an, an episode where I use the internet and cheat to collect them all, because, like, no way in hell am I finding them all on my own. <laughs> then what's over here? If that way was a giant demon monster, then what's south? A sarcophagus. And some treasure. This does not feel right. What's that? 
Found a new discovery point. Metallic funerary mirror. What a nice mirror! It's beautiful. Opulent, but with an understated elegance. Yeah, you can just imagine the kind of person who would own this. Hmm. For a relic like this to remain here untouched, this place must be entirely unlooted. Yes, Saray. We know you only have one filter for everything. I wonder if the person buried here is a woman. Yes. She's probably the one who owned that mirror. Oh. Oh, so this was a grave. I'll be putting this back. That's probably best. Hey, do seraphims show up in mirrors? No. Well, usually not. But if we concentrate, we can make ourselves appear. Wait, so you mean even people with no resonance can see seraphim that way? Somehow, yes. But that's great! You could use that to communicate with humans. That might be difficult. It takes enormous amounts of concentration just to show up briefly. Anything beyond that is impossible. No, oh, that's a shame. Huh, so that explains it. People always whisper about ghosts that only show up in mirrors. Those had to be Seraphim. Yes. Sometimes when we're putting makeup on, we accidentally focus you guys wear makeup? too hard and... Putting, putting on, on makeup? makeup? <laughs> well, I mean... I am a girl. Oh, that was a revelation. Okay, 10,000 gold. Are you serious? 10,000 gold. 10,000 gold. Oh my goodness. 10,000. 10,000. 10,000. That means we are sitting on 123,000 gold right now. Which is a lot. <laughs> That's going to help with upgrades exponentially. Okay, well... Now, I guess we have to go back to the church in Pendrago. Hey, Edna! Lila! Check this out! Ta-da! Is this a picture or some kind of poster? Looks more like some kind of ad. A breath of fresh air into the fashion of the Seraphim. The latest trend from Sparrow Feather brand launches right now? What is this supposed to be? It's a new business targeting the Seraphim. You guys don't need food, but you need clothes, right? It's an untouched market. The perfect opportunity for a monopoly. This is it! I don't think the Seraphim are exactly hurting for new clothes. I like what I'm wearing already, too. Well, of course you do. You're totally behind the times. Behind? The times? <laughs> no one asked what you think. That attitude is no good. Girls need to dress fashionably or you'll get left behind. It doesn't matter if you're seraphim or human. No! Then what kind of clothes do you have for us? That's where you guys come in. I don't know what's all the rage among seraphim these days. <sighs> huh? Aren't you too excited? I think you broke her. You okay, Lila? Behind the times. <laughs> too late. <laughs> Great, Rose. Now look what you did. Huh? Me? <laughs> that bothered her a lot. Wait, what? Oh, I'm. am I supposed to read these books? Enid Fortin, eldest of the Fortin sisters. A pleasant and cheerful nun, however, she engaged in relations with Father Eric and bore his illegitimate child. Both were, ex both were excommunicated from the church and exiled to Horsa Village, on the edge of Zafgot Moor. Rodine Fortin, middle Fortin sister. A nun with great compassion and a sense of service. Some of the faithful refer to her as a saint. She approved of the land reclamation project in Plitzerback Wetland and relocated there with a group of believers. For details of the land reclamation project, please refer to another resource. Runette Fortin. Youngest of the Fortin sisters. Is this supposed to be, like, um... <laughs> I noticed. I don't know if... No, there was a Medusa earlier. It's supposed to be representing Medusa, uh, Uriel, and Steno. The three Gorgon sisters. <laughs> Runette Fortin. Youngest of the Fortin sisters. An eloquent man... Er, uh, eloquent man? Yes, an eloquent man nun. An eloquent nun rich in knowledge made her name as a reformer in church politics and financial affairs. Following the distance or disappearance of Pope Masid Masidra, she demonstrated a number of miracles leading to her election as cardinal. Note the hometown of the Fortin sisters is the village of Fortin. Really? Who would have known that? 
located beyond the Gliven Basin. The village is one of wait one of extreme poverty, and is suspected that the sisters were strongly pressured to take their vows in order to rest or reduce the number of mouths to feed. I can't believe it. Both of the Medusa type Hellions are. They're probably Cardinal Fortin's sisters. Are you sure? It seems like too much of a coincidence. Well, the only way to learn the truth is to ask the Hellions themselves. But how? If we're right, then I'm guessing they've gone back to their hometown. A gut feeling? Sort of, yeah. Just a hunch based on how humans think. Well, it's not impossible, psychologically speaking. <laughs> Halfway logic is better than no logic at all. And Rose's gut hasn't led us astray yet. But we can't go there right now. Glavin Basin is currently closed off. So, we'll have to sit tight and wait for an opportunity, huh? Got angel wings. Huh, weird. I still see the exclamation marks. Does it mean downstairs, or...? No, there is no downstairs. Rather immature, isn't he? All that talk of ghostly white child wandering the shrine church. <laughs> Perhaps he'd feel better if we all got together and call on Mautelas to banish the ghost. Oh, ghostly white child. Is he referencing to what Lafacet looks like? Maybe perhaps someone saw Laffy or something like that? Any news about whoever slaughtered those kids? We need to get to the truth. Wait, we need to get to the truth about the Medusa Hellions. The Three Sisters' home village is supposed to be somewhere deep in Gliven Basin. If we head there, maybe we can uncover something. I guess that's where we're headed then. So they were kicked out of their village to reduce population and forced to be nuns. In which case, this kind of push them all to Malevolence Town. It's only now that I am truly appreciating the fast travel items that appeared in Berseria. Because in here, luckily, there's plenty of save points you can fast travel from, but for some reason in Pendrago, the only place you can fast travel to and from is the inn. So... Actually, no, I do think I see the last of these weird abandoned villages over here. But to get there, they'll have to let us through their camp. And I can't go in through the other side, because they won't let me through there. And if they won't let me through either camp, then I can't actually go and see anything that I need to go and see. Meaning that, for right now, this entire side quest is on halt. Okay then. Well. Time to go speak with Maven. Oh yeah, and uh, apparently this and the giant dinosaur print down in the uh, swamp area now have skits tied to them again. That's a funny thing they've got here. A doll inside of a doll. Oh? You see them a lot in the north. It's folk art. Hmm. You don't think... Maybe it's meant to symbolize the relationship between Seraphim and humans? Trust me, Mikleo, those dolls have literally nothing to do with each other. Whoa, uh... I wouldn't go overthinking it. But look, they specifically chose this odd configuration. There has to be some meaning behind it, don't you think? Hmm. Undoubtedly. So what would you say it means, then, having a human inside of a Seraph? Well, maybe... Maybe it represents the distinct personality inside each Seraph? No, hold on. Perhaps, in depicting a fanciful inverse of the typical Seraph and human vessel relationship, it's meant to symbolize coexistence between the two. Zavid, is there anything inside the innermost doll? Huh? Yes. Typically, in the very core is... A plumpet. A plumpet? Hmm. Yes. Yes, a symbol, of course. <laughs> but of what? A pit is a seed. A sign of rebirth, perhaps? But then, why a plum? True, some bloom in the spring, but... Hmm. I'm starting to get why you like toying with our boy Mickey here. I know, right? In some ways, he's even more pure than Saray. Such rich philosophy. Very profound. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, that reminds me of those horrid art appreciation classes I had to take forever ago. And it was literally everyone looking at anything and pulling out anything they can think of out of nothing. Like, I swear people would look at these pieces of pottery for like an hour just being like, Yes, magnificent. This symbolizes the trust between their people. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, this is a chamber pot. Like... I think you guys are looking too far into this. Alright, Maven, let's see what you have to Find say. Anything? We know that Heldolf was stricken with a great deal of pain and hardship. It seems almost like some kind of curse. 
I can see that. Bound to the curse that is eternal loneliness. Hmm. During our most recent encounter with him, he taunted Saray, preying on his emotions and trying to bait him into becoming a fallen shepherd. But afterwards, he reached out to Saray and tried to convince him to join his ranks. The Lord of Calamity, reaching out to the shepherd. I want to know. <laughs> Just what I happened to Heldoff to make him the man we see today? But that would infringe on the old man's taboo. Oh my god, she's so angry. We don't even have a clue what that really means. Maybe this is selfish of us, but still. <laughs> is there no chance you can help? Follow me. Maven, are you sure about this? There's no point in stories if we lose the future in which to tell them. No taboo is worth that fate. Okay, so I changed our costumes a little bit before this cutscene. Hopefully it's not too bad. I probably should have done this in a less plot-intensive cutscene. Oh man, nice! Check it out! That huge thing has carvings all over it! Is this from the era of the gods? I've never seen anything like it before. Oh boy, more fodder for our resident nerds. <laughs> I remember. Oh, shoot, they started people, talking. This monument is nothing more than a lump of rock. However, the storyteller of time can harness its true capabilities. The storyteller of time? The one who passes stories to future generations. Stories of humans, Seraphim, Hellions, Shepherds, the Lord of Calamity. It is my clan to whom that fate has fallen. A storyteller is to be a dispassionate observer. He must not interfere in world events. But I am prepared to accept the consequences. Is that an earthen historia? There are more of them? The others were fine, but this one had to be shielded from the eyes of men. So I kept it for myself. Then this must be... Yes. This is a record of the dawn of chaos. Come, experience the truth of the dawning of this age. Perceive the light. Perceive the darkness. Place your hands upon the monolith. Oh then, God, all the close clipping. Your eyes. Forashkus were kusaresko, werek foriek ohish kehem omem. Do not ponder the answer for now. Simply feel. Understand? <clears throat> what happened? Where is this? I've never seen this place before. We're experiencing the dawn of chaos. So I suppose this would be... Camlon, the Origin Village! Well, might as well go on. Undisagreed. Oh, is this one of those go inside the storybook situations? With a fixed camera? Whoa! That's unexpected. <laughs> Before I know it, I just hear Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. It's Kingdom Hearts 2 PTSD all over again. Bye, guys. Pretty big crowd here. No kidding. General, this is absurd. How long must we keep living like this? I am protecting you from the invasion by the forces of Highland. I'd expect you to be more grateful, Shepard. Huh? This guy's the previous Shepard? You have occupied our village for half a year now. This isn't protection, it's house arrest. Not to mention, the Kingdom of Highland is only acting against us because Roland's moved their army here in the first place. Looks like they can't hear us. The Earth in Historia shows that which has transpired. The strategic importance of this location cannot be overlooked just because the Shepherd founded a village here. You can trust Highland would say the same. What, so it was inevitable? When one considers the rise of the Highland Valkyries, yes. I've had enough. Just leave us. Michael, are you really okay with this? Those bastards are treating Lord Mautellus' shrine as their own fortress! 
How much longer must they blaspheme the Seraphim? Brother? It's okay, Muse. He's right that Camelon happens to be a strategically crucial location, given that we're here along the northern border. An army that controls this territory can send troops to the enemy's capital at will. Their interest in our land is sad, but understandable. Do you really trust the words of that tyrant? They will do as they will. We must focus on what we believe in. As a lone shepherd, with no other family in the world to call his own, I vow to protect Muse and everyone else. I swear it. So the Origin Village was occupied by Heldolf. And then dragged into the chaos of war. Still, you can understand why neither army could leave it alone. Oh. Is something wrong, Miklia? Huh? Oh, well... The humans were treating Maltellus with scorn and contempt. No wonder his blessing was lost. But there's probably more to the story. Let's head towards the shrine. Right. Okay, which... Wait, I can use all my Seraphim powers here? Wind! Fire! Earth! Nothing's happening. Could it be Rollins has noticed Michael led Lord Mautellus away from the capital? No. Much more likely it's just a feint to draw out the forces of the Northern Territory. They just want a pretext to declare war. This is absurd. Thoroughly absurd. But that's humans for ya. You said it. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Okay, bye. According to what the shepherd said, the shrine is full of malevolence, and the village is beginning to lose its blessing. Oh no, is Maltellus going to become a hellion? Let us put faith in the shepherd. He said he would never allow that, even should it cost him his life. But still, if the shepherd would be lost anyway, wouldn't it be better for us just to evacuate while we can? There's no way that someone like Michael could ever do such a thing. Right. He's the shepherd. He couldn't just abandon Maltellus and let him succumb to malevolence. Saray. Okay then, on we go. To learn the more of this story. The moral of this story. If this story. podunk town can serve as the hey, key that's to Artorius success the conquest of the Northern Territory. Then I can suffer the ire of one measly shepherd. What is it? An enemy attack! The Northerners have arrived! No! It appears to be the Highland Army! I will not rise to their bait. Assemble the troops. We shall retreat. We will make no counterattack? Would you have me throw men away on some meaningless skirmish with Highland? Don't be an imbecile. Guess this town is destined for the scrap heap after all. Have the order to retreat given at once. Unbelievable! Doesn't he care about the happiness of the villagers? This trivial nonsense is what got the entire village wiped out? Duh. Enemy encampment spotted! Stop Police it! Saray, knowing we can't do anything to intervene just makes it worse. What on earth is Heldolf doing? Heldolf abandoned the village and fled. Filthy Roland scum! Sneak into the mountains, will you? <laughs> There's more over here! What? You <laughs> lost quickly. How could this happen? Shepard, Muse has gone to the shrine! What? To beg the Roland's army for assistance! But Heldolf's already, already run away. away! Muse, please be safe! Hurry to the shrine! Right. Maybe I should take this cutscene a little more seriously than I am. But we've already passed the point of no return on that, so off we go. Thought he went this way. Why would I go a different way? Okay. Wait, please! 
I understand that, as a fellow shepherd, you feel strong empathy toward him. That is normal. But please, do not forget what Maven told us. <sighs> you too, Miklio. I'm sorry. It's just... We can already tell this isn't going to end well. We've learned more than enough here to put the pieces together at this point. But we still need to see this through, don't we? Let's go. Right. Miklio looks out of character, to say nothing of Saray. Well, of course. He was bound to notice before too long. Yeah. And when you add in the fact that none of this is heading for a happy ending. We all picked up on it. Miklio, Muse, and the Shepherd all look too similar not to. Let's go. We're very close to the whole truth. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe I should take off these costumes for a second because... Oh. <coughs> well, I guess I just ruined this emotional scene forever. My bad. Who knew that we'd be put the in a child, time flashback? Is that... She looks a lot like... He's alive. Oh, he's alive. Is he gonna have white hair or oh something? Oh my god! Now tell us! All is lost. Now tell us has become a Hellion. And this, this innocent child, all due to the insipid ambitions of one man. Brother, wait! <laughs> no, don't! Please! Brother! Oh, ye who brought us this misfortune, I grant thee eternal solitude! Did he just off. live now and forever in a hell of your own making? This is my answer. I'm a little confused, but hopefully they'll explain a bit more. Stop! So they anticipated our retreat. You are the Valkyries, I take it? Lightning! General! And that's how he became... <sighs> a Hellion? It's because he got all that malevolence transferred Eldolf, to him? Prepare yourself! <sighs> what on earth?! Wait, what? <sighs> So he helped Heldolf? Unintentionally? So stay away from us, you monster! <clears throat> Even his own troops ran. So that's what went down. So Kitty Beard didn't become a Hellion. He was made one. One bearing the most terrible curse there could possibly be. And the one responsible for it was the previous Shepherd. So then, I... Is this... The same village? If it's not over yet, then there must be more to it. It's not over, huh? Big Leo. We gotta be close to the end. Shouldn't we just take a quick gander before we head back? <sighs> you look pretty bummed out by this. Well, yeah. I'm sorry. Sorry I'm not more bummed out myself, I mean. You don't need to apologize for that. Hmm... Whenever a friend of mine is down, if I'm not feeling the same way, I always feel like... Maybe something's missing from me. It's just like he said, Rose. There's nothing you need to apologize for. In fact, uh... 
Yeah. Sorry. Huh? If anything, we should be the ones sorry for making you worry so much. We just need a little more time to get our feelings sorted out. We'll be fine. You can count on it. Gotcha. By the way, uh, in case you guys didn't notice, this is actually Zavid's alternate color, which is also Dezel's alternate color, which is this uh, white and black costume, which looks pretty damn cool. But honestly, nothing beats shirtless Zavid. Nothing. And I'm going to change Saray's hair back to normal. You know what? Rose can stay that way for a little bit. She looks like a completely different character. Let's go. I said let's go. <laughs> oh shit, I forgot to take the thing off Miklio. God damn it. Such thick malevolence. I feel sick. Malevolence of this impossible magnitude can only mean one thing. Not now, tell us! Born far too early by the looks Gramps. of it. Poor mother and child. Neither of you deserved this. Oh, and Saray. Is the child left behind? Perhaps this too is fate. That child's human! Are we not all the same when we first breathe this air? Save for the vessel we chance into? But a child born so premature won't last but a few months. Probably so. Zenrus! Oh, in a second. Muse! My goodness! What happened here? I'm afraid there's no time to explain. We have to seal off the malevolence before it drifts into Elysia. Who's that child? S Celine's? Could it be she... she was with child? In order to contain Mount Tellus within this land, you would be the sacrifice to seal the path to Elysia? But... Mount Tellus is using the land itself as his vessel. Even if we can trap him here, it would be no more than empty consolation. I understand, but even so, this is something that we humans have brought upon ourselves. And the shepherd? I take it that the shepherd has finally fallen? That may be so. But fate has blessed us with a thread of hope. You don't mean to say you will raise these children to become the shepherd and his sub-lord? For a human and a seraph child raised together, anything is possible. However, it all depends on these children. I humbly accept your two small beacons of hope. Gramps! Zenrus, I have not the words to thank you. Farewell, my dearest child. Miklio. Oh, so that was Miklio's mother. Oh god, I hope he doesn't like come back and Miklio's crying because it's gonna go look super jank. Gramps! So, Saray, you were a survivor from that village. And our boy Mickey was refashioned into a seraph. So I was a sacrifice. You can cry if you want. Why would I cry? I'm surprised, to be sure, but I'm not sad. And now we know where Maltellus is. Now the only thing left is our answer. Right. So does this mean we've found it? I know now what path I want to take. Though I'm not sure that counts as an answer. Very well then. Let's consult with Maven once more. 
Hey, where'd he go? Just a little while ago, he was activating the hidden powers of this monolith. He's probably still around here somewhere. You're right. Let's go look for him. He just walked away after all that? Come to think of it, I wonder how this monolith works. How do you think it activates the Earth and Historia? Probably because this is an Earth Pulse Nexus, don't you think? Earth Pulse? <laughs> I'll let Terror Firma herself do the explaining. The Earth Pulse is a manifestation of the power of Mother Nature that permeates the Earth. Exactly. Logren has been known for centuries as a spot where several branches of the Earth Pulse intersect. If you're already such an expert, why call on me? Because when you say it, it's that much more adorable. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. So, the Earth in Historia is reacting to the Earth Pulse. Um, could you repeat that in English for dumb bums like me? Well, um... Okay, let's say instead that there's all this water bubbling up here. Then the Earth in Historia would be like a water wheel. When the wheel goes round, it grinds out the record of history, just like it was milling grains. Oh, okay. Makes sense to me. But then why are the Earth and Historia behaving like a water wheel? Uh, probably... I told you. The Earth Pulse is the power of the Earth. Oh, I see. So if Maltellus made the Earth and Historia, and he's using the Earth itself as his vessel... Then probably it's the force of his will that's making them do that. Trust me, if there's one thing Maltellus knows more than anything else, it's Earth Pulse points. <laughs> Okay then, well, that was eventful. I mean, at least we know where Saray and Miklio came from. I don't feel like that's hyper important, but at least it gave us some backstory to them and how they wound up on the, uh, in Elysia. And yeah, this is the exact spot where Zavid stopped us up here and Aizen saw the illusion of his sister. I wonder if Melchior knows, or maybe like, he just showed Aizen? I don't know. Kind of a weird one. Because I don't feel like Melchior would know exactly who his sister was, but he's pretty well informed. What a sad turn of affairs. There was more to it than just Heldolf and the Shepherd Michael. So many factors converged to bring about that disaster. What happened to that village was so ghastly, you can sort of see how Michael finally came to do what he did. But still... No one except maybe his closest friends ought to buy I was in the depths of my despair as an excuse. Right. The actions he took that day changed the fates of millions. That's true. It was his thoughtless curse of eternal solitude that paved the way for Kittybeard to become the Lord of Calamity. Without the curse, Old Sourpuss never would have hated the world so much. Never would have wanted it to turn into a world of Hellions. You can't blame the people of Highlander Rollins for seeing him as a monster. But I get the sense that deep down, in his own misguided way, he just wants to bring peace to his country. Some of the blame, too, has to go to the former Shepherd for keeping secret the fact that he'd spirited Mautelis away. Because of that, folks who didn't know the true situation wound up desecrating the shrine and causing Mautelis to transform into a Hellion. Oh. That's right. If they'd only talked about it more openly, there might have been better understanding and cooperation. It also looks like the former Shepherd didn't really trust anyone other than his own flesh and blood. To those who believed in the Shepherd, I can think of no greater wound. True enough. He may have genuinely wanted every one of them to be happy. But if he never shared this desire with anyone, then... Regardless of Michael's circumstances, it doesn't change the fact that what Heldalf did was unspeakably cruel. That he would toss strangers to the wolves just to further his own interests. None of this comes down to black and white, that's for sure. Well, Maven told us just to feel and experience what had happened. We'll go tell him what we felt. Okay, uh, this makes me wonder if we're gonna head over to, uh, Artorius's home. Which I guess is technically in the sky, but... Hey, Maven. You're back. What are you doing here? Oh, I just wanted to make sure the monolith doesn't get damaged. Your thoughts? No one involved was fully in the wrong, but no one was really right either. That's how it felt to me. A useful understanding to reach. Now, your answer. Saray, let us hear your answer to this. My answer is I want to save Heldolf. The Shepherd's job doesn't just boil down to quell the Lord of Calamity, or even clean up the previous Shepherd's mistakes. 
When malevolence consumes Seraphim and turns them into Hellions, we save them. Yet when it brings misfortune and grief to humans, we say they only have themselves to blame. It doesn't seem fair. So that is your answer. Don't know if it counts as one. There are humans out there just like Heldolf. He just happened to play one part in a cascade of terrible events. I'm not gonna say you shouldn't sympathize with him. But I will say it would strike me as bizarre to completely let him off the hook for the horrors he brought to such a peaceful village. And what he's trying to do now is still messed up, right? Absolutely. It's wrong, period, and I will stop it. But even so, you would save this man? If I won't save humans like Heldolf, who've had Hellionhood thrust upon them, I'll never see humans and Seraphim live in peace. I see. So then you... Really are an idiot. Yep. Saray is Saray, and we love him for it. That's right. He couldn't be anyone else even if he tried. So, Mr. Teller, that what you were looking for? For such a man, ending his loneliness would be the sole path to salvation. Do you understand what that means? Taking his life, I would expect. Saray, can you carry that burden with you? Indeed. That, even more than your answer, is the crucial matter. Right. What's important now is whether you truly will not waver. Or rather, whether you truly believe in your answer and are willing to accept its repercussions. No matter what happens, and no matter what cost. Wait, are you asking him to prove his determination in battle? Put bluntly, yes. In order to defeat one who has been abandoned in time, the bonds of strength must be severed. Show me how that is done. Defeat the one who has been abandoned in time? You can't be talking about... What? How to sever the bonds of strength. So eternal loneliness is a curse, you say? It makes sense now. Old man. Now then, show me! What? Wait, what? <laughs> this is a weird boss fight, and he has no weaknesses. Wonderful. So, um, Magalu, I might have said this earlier in the video, sorry, I've been recording for like three hours due to some interruptions, but Magalu said, you guys said that she became a storyteller just like Maven did here. Hence why his last name is Maven. <laughs> so that makes a lot of sense. May your soul oh, want to read this about him. He keeps us pinned down with his projectile attacks. Maybe the best way is to move in closer? Whoa there, Saray. You can bet the old fella has more than one trick up his sleeve. If you're gonna get near him, be very careful. Don't okay. Back. I certainly won't. But even if there is a way to sever the bonds of strength, and if what? we were to actually Did he just throw CDs at me? What would happen to you? Do you see why it is you waver? Settle this, Shepard! Do not let Maven's conviction go to waste! What? No, I'm I'm just trying to this is a weird fight, okay? Oh my god, he has so much help. How many minutes of me hitting circle is this going to be? He barely does, like, any damage at all. Why is he even fighting back, is my question. To test us, or what? Wow, he puts down a lot of status ailments. What? He has a mystic? Oh, no. Did he just cut us with his pipe? Is this the shepherd's preparedness? Oh. Oh. Well, then. <laughs> his mystic guard hit both of them, killed them, hit me, killed Miklio, and everyone but me. All right, then. Let's eat some food in preparation, I guess. 
You old man, just go down. Oh my god, we knocked him so far away and ended my combo I was trying so hard to get. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh god damn it. Maven. Maven. Don't you dare. Oh no. Is this the shepherd's prepared? Oh my god, how do I even avoid that? He literally kills everyone! <laughs> okay, then. His conviction, he's trying to murder us and being successful at it in many attempts. Ocean Blitz! Break on through! Burst! Ocean Blitz! Weak! Look out! That's bad! Weak! You're so crazy! Break on through! Holy shit, Maven, just chill! It's like impossible to even get you into hit stun. Will you stop throwing paper plates and CDs at me? And she's dead again. I'm just using Mikleo in hopes that I can stay as far away as possible. Okay, he used it. But he used it over there. Facing... Nope, it's an AoE around him. Oh no. But all the way over here? Lila, no? Edna, no? Fine, Edna, just revive me. What the... Ow! Did he just throw his entire backpack in the air? What is this fight? It feels like a joke fight, but it's not. Uh oh. Edna, no, Edna. No, sorry, I don't know what you're. Sorry, no, 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 no. I accidentally tapped circle, and Saray canceled everything else to run over there and try to hit him. They killed me with every... Oh, no. <laughs> what is this fight? What the hell is this man? I combo him for like 50 hits. He hits me once with a paper plate and I'm dazed. Yes. Okay. That's a bit more damage. Damn, Rose is doing excellently against Maven. She had him stuck in the corner. Don't you dare, Maven. Holy sh- if I get hit by that, I'm gonna be so upset. Oh, thank goodness. Are you- No, you will not. You will not stun me with a goddamn paper plate and take me down like that. Oh, no. No, 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 no. No, no, I'm not getting hit by that. Oh my god. All of you. No, no, Maven, Maven, I was in court. Oh. What is this? What is this game I'm playing? Why are you a harder fight than Haldolf? Mechanically. Why are you using Virgil moves that I've seen in Devil May Cry? Why? He's literally doing moon cutter. Oh. Is this the shepherd's No. Maven, think about this. 
Rose, this is for you. You're careless. Weak. Weak. Look out. Maven, holy shit. Will you even let me breathe? God damn. Weak. Weak. This is for you. Now then. What is this? Sure what is you? this fight? No one is saber. Wait, Mikleo's alive? Mikleo, stop. Mikleo, don't. Okay, Edna. We're gonna do this very carefully. Mikleo's doing a rad combo and got a lucky stun. Edna, revive me now. Okay, Edna. Here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna drop an arcane bottle on me. Give me some BG right now. You can arm ties with Mikleo. We're gonna play the long range game right now until Lila comes back up. And he killed all of them again. Oh shit. Come back, Edna. Edna, don't cast anything. He'll just come after you. And yeah, it does not to deal with that attack. And we're all dead again. Cool. You're careless! Wait, what? No, we're alive! Don't you Maven? Maven, you asshole. Don't do this. We're trying to give the shit. He just one-shotted Lila over there. Good God. Zavid, no, don't cast spells. He'll just go over there and destroy you. And why do you guys keep spawning in that corner? He just does that. Rose, you're back up. Because you won't cast spells, so he won't just follow you into oblivion. I don't even see a damage counter. What I want to see is not a mere display of strength. So you really are immortal? You understand by now, don't you, the way to defeat me? Give up? Roll yes. plates? Turn my friends into attacks with wills of their own and use those attacks to pierce through the bonds of strength. What Dezel said he did. Then why aren't you doing it? I'm not a Hellion. Even if you make use of that means, your friends will not be consumed with malevolence. <laughs> you won't admit it. After all, to demonstrate that method upon me is tacit acknowledgement that it is your only option withheld off as well. But Maven, isn't there any other way at all? No. Even Lila's power is not enough to purify one as consumed with malevolence as he is. You should know that. Saray. Rose. If you weigh lives on scales, you will falter at the crucial moment. All the more so if it is your friend's lives in question. But if you do waver, and your wavering leads you to a faulty answer, you may never recover. In this way does virtue become vice. <sighs> but if you will die for the answer you truly believe in, even failure will not stop you from rising again. What you should fear is not failure, but rather that fear itself will compromise your belief in your answer. Lila. Now then, Saray. If you intend to make this a first, then I shall end it. Show me, not just with words, but with the spirit of belief. I shall end this. Luminous uh. It is a damned shame, Lila. Unfortunately, it looks like they still don't understand. So, it was all for naught. No, just a little bit more. Even when they resented their own helplessness. Even when they grieved for a fallen comrade. Even when evil schemed to lead them astray. Saray and his companions have pushed ever on, never losing themselves. Knowing fear, but not malevolence, they came all this way to stand here together. You're really something. I don't like having regrets, 
And I don't like giving them to other people either. Don't you forget it. Saray, Rose, you paralyzed or something? Going up against Hellions is already life or death. It shouldn't be new to you. Edna... Savid... It's just as they said, Rose. Saray, do you remember what I told you? Back at Lady Lake? I didn't come all this way just to be a liability. I said it before. Do I need to say it again? No. If the Shepherd Saray truly believes in his answer, then surely may he bring an end to the Age of Chaos. Then show us. Show us your answer. Saray! Everyone. You have good friends, lad. Darn right. So, I'm just going to kill them Let's and go. put them all into bullets Come at in order to defeat you? Low <laughs> order, armatize, press L1. Maven, this is my answer. <sighs> what? Oh man! Wait, wait. What? Oh, okay. I thought the animation wasn't even finished for it for a second. I'm like, what is Suri doing? Maven? I thought I could hold out until you finished it, but... Maven? Oh, I'm so sorry it came to this. You're an idiot, too. You're not wrong, but I have no regret. So from my understanding, the the way the whole bullet thing is that they were saying it's the same thing that Dezel did, which is why they're hesitant, but... Does that mean that Saray was willingly ready to kill Miklio in order to fire this bullet? What's going on? What are you saying? Come on! It's because I violated the taboo. If the user breaks the terms of the oath, the special powers granted by the oath likewise vanish. You should have told us. Please, do not blame Lila. She merely did what she believed was right for all of you. And it was my decision to make as well. I believe too. In my answer. And in my friends. And for their sake, I will not waver in what must be done. So there will be no regrets. It is time. To say our farewells. I promise. I'll never forget what you've told me, Maven. And I'll teach it to others as well. Saray. You've... <sighs> never... Did I imagine... I would die with others... By my... Side. Thank you. Maven, well, Maven's dead. Let's go. To Camlon? Yeah. Montellus should still be there. Let's make for Alicia first. There should be a road there leading to Camlon. We saw Gramps come running when the village fell. Oh, that makes sense. So Camlon was close to Alicia. Very likely. That fits with the idea that it was a strategically important location for Highland, Rollins, and the Northern Powers. Yeah, good point. But it looked to me like the road to Camlon was sealed off. Yeah, by my mother. You can cry if- I told you I'm not going to cry! <laughs> <laughs> Looks like this is the final battle. Let's end this. Right on! Wait, this is the end of the game? I mean, to be fair, I felt like I've been playing this forever, but... Hey, Shepard's Outfit Trial. Cool. Let's see what that is. I know I haven't really had a lot to say about that whole last section, but... To be honest, I was a little. What's the difference? What is the... 
Oh, there's a music to it. The legendary shepherd's cloak woven with feathers changes the music in battle. Okay. Well, I guess that's that. So, I'm a little confused about the entire sequence of events that went on. Um, especially in the flashback area. I know, it seems like I've been confused this whole time, and it's because, honestly, I kind of am. <laughs> I don't think there was really a time in Burst Area where I was feeling like this, but a lot of this game, things happen in flashbacks, and they're so... I mean, it had voice acting and everything, but it kind of jumped around quite a bit between uh, the village and Haldolf and what was actually going on, so I can't say I fully understood that part, but it's cool that we saw where Miklio and Saray came from, like their birthplace. And that whole thing with Maven, I don't really know what the game wanted me to think about that. Oh, they laid his pipe right there. What? Oh, something there. Because Maven is a character that I've seen quite a few times. I'll just be walking around and he's like, Oh ho, I'm being an adventurer! And then you basically just leave him alone for a long while. And then he'd show up again. And then this time he decided to test us in this trial. But he had broken his oath, so he just dies, so he don't have to fire the bullet that maybe kills Mikleo. I don't know, I'm a little confused right now. But either way, let's continue the story. I really hope the final dungeon in this game is not, um... Really hoping it's not Artorius tier design. And I don't mean, like, Artorius' castle didn't look cool, because it did. I really did like the look of it, but navigating it was a nightmare. Like, it just... no. It wasn't fun. Hey, Rose. You knew Maven from before, right? How did you guys meet? One time when we were being pursued, he lent us a hand. He even showed us to a hideout without asking any questions. You must be talking about Tintagel Ruins. Yep. But I never thought the inside would be like that. Hmm. What? If you got something to say, spit it out. I just thought that maybe he approached you because he knew you had high resonance. As in, like, he was out to gather information as a storyteller would. Oh, that sort of stuff, huh? That sort of stuff? Yeah. Doesn't matter to me what he was after. He helped us out, and we had a lot of fun together. That's all that matters. Do you think so, Saray? He might have had the same intent with reaching out to you, too. Hmm. Does it matter to me, either? To me, Maven is just the man who taught me what it means to be an explorer. Got a problem? Hey, ease up. You guys are making me look like the bad guy here. I wouldn't worry too much. You always were. Give me a break. So this thing was a tool used to defeat the Lord of Calamity. Well, whatever it's for, with Mautelis and Heldolf all fused together, it stands a chance of working. Zavid, did you willingly give it to Saray knowing that information? Oh, snap, you got me figured out. <laughs> Not. I just thought that'd be cool to say. It's like I told you, just a hunch. It's not like I'm some kind of prophet or whatever. I mean, what exactly is this thing? How did you get it? I just picked it up somewhere. Where, you ask? I forgot. It's a little hard to swallow that it's just a coincidence, don't you think? Well, believe it, don't believe it, whatever. That's how the world works. All right. I won't ask anymore. But sometimes, your will creates chances for certain things to happen. You want to know what they call that? Destiny. Destiny, huh? Well, in any case, it's yours now. How you use it is all up to you. Whether what happens after you pull that trigger is coincidence or destiny is up to me, huh? I know exactly where that gun came from. I don't know, I can't take the term destiny seriously anymore. Heard the uh, lightning returns line. In Final Fantasy Lightning Returns, there's a line that Lightning spouts after winning battle that just says, Destiny is destiny, and it's the dumbest thing ever. <laughs> so that's very hard to take that seriously anymore.